Joe, it is possible to go racing in kind of a big league way on the relative cheap. Man, what the heck is in this thing? Uranium? To illustrate the nature between fiberglass and carbon fiber. Yes, yes. What's up, people? Today is a fun day because my race cars are naked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, anyway, so I started this video off being creepy. Uh, and let's keep it going by saying the reason they're stripped down is because the body panels are going for paint. And that's actually really exciting because in racing, you get accustomed to just thinking of all the details and the mechanics and everything. So it's nice when you get to the point where you really get to polish it and make it look nice. So come on over a little more carefully, get a good view here. I want to show you. This is the 1986 Formula Continental. It's an Argo that I bought this past summer uh, for $8,000, which is really cool and I think is important. I want to showcase this build with you guys because it just goes to show it is possible to go racing in kind of a big league way on the relative cheap. Obviously, race cars cost a lot of money, but you too can get a Formula Continental for somewhere like ten to twenty thousand dollars, if you don't mind working on it a little bit, of course, and go worthwhile, you know, real racing. It's a tube frame car with a two liter single overhead can shaft Ford engine. It has a downdraft two barrel carburetor. It's basically a stock engine. That's the class. Yes, I know all you tuner guys. We could throw turbos and go crazy and all with it but then you wouldn't be eligible for the class that it runs in. That's pointless. You just get a different formula car at that point. So it's fun to think of, but we, you know, gonna go over this. Now, something else that's fun in taking the bodywork off right here that I wanna show you guys, I realized you could test this car out with no, no wings on it. You can literally just unbolt the rear wing and the front wing, wow, this nose is freaking heavy. Hey, Dylan, remind me I need to go get the other nose cone and have it painted while we're at it too. Okay. Okay, so anyway, dang, this is way heavier than I thought it was. Oh man, that's, I just means I can punt somebody clear off the track and I won't hurt my nose. You, but you didn't hear me say that. So anyway, the front wing on this literally comes off. You've got two, oh God, it sounds terrible. Come here and take a look at this. You got two little screws on the side so you can adjust your angle of attack here with the wing. And then basically right here where the center of pressure is gonna be on the wing, it has the tube that runs through all the ribs. And this is kind of jank. It just has a cotter pin that keeps the whole wing from sliding off. And that goes right through the nose. So I can literally just take the front wings off, unbolt the rear wings, and drive this car as a two liter Formula Ford. Which actually I think is gonna make for a cool YouTube video later with it because I can drive it with no aerodynamics on it, like no downforce, and get it set up for proper mechanical setup. And I know that it'll put some downforce on it so there's a spring rate thing. But set it up for mechanical grip, get the car balanced, and then once the car is balanced pretty well, then put the wings on it, drive it again, and then balance it with the aerodynamics. I think that'll be a really cool video and I don't think anybody's really done that yet on YouTube. So anyway, in prepping this for paint, so here's what I'm gonna do. I think actually I'm gonna paint this red, okay? And the wings, I'm gonna leave them be aluminum so I can just polish them and brush them. It'll look really good with the aluminum down here. And I mean, red's good. Everybody likes red, it's sort of fun. I was thinking about painting it silver because I thought that would look really cool with the silver wings. And now I kinda of wanna do that again that I'm saying that, but I like a little color in my life. So that's where this is gonna go. And then afterward, when I come back to this race car and show you guys in the Continental, Come in and take a quick peek. It really needs to be freshened up more. It's got a fresh fuel cell in here, and I did some things to make sure that the shifter isn't rubbing on the fuel cell. But all the frame, there's lots of things that need to be painted and refreshed. And if you look right here with the suspension, the uh, sway bar, which are actually adjustable sway fins here, which is really cool, it is not even connected to the suspension, as you can see, because they were gonna do corner weighting, and lots of these nuts and bolts are not even tightened. So the whole thing needs to be thrown on scales, Every nut and bolt checked, completely gone over, but not before I go through this and kind of refresh and clean and paint and, you know, uh, protect things from corrosion. And I could send out parts like this um, to be newly plated, but if it's something that I'm not concerned about cracking, I probably won't. Just because this is a lesser expensive Formula Continental and not like a vintage Formula One car or something. So I'm not gonna be like overly obsessive compulsive on it. Of course, I gotta do a seat. Uh, I gotta do the uh, fire extinguishing system. And honestly, for this car, instead of me futzing with setting up a carburetor 
and there's all kinds of tricks that you learn over large periods of time in this one. I will probably buy one set up for formula car racing. And the reason I tell you this is, when I ran Formula Fords a million years ago, uh, my dad and I did the carburetor and it was set up brilliantly and everything was perfect. And you drive it and make power, but the second you start going back and forth to warm your tires or you're in a corner too long, it would just stumble and die. And the guys that race Formula Fords forever have all these tricks to do with the carburetors and they work fine. And I don't have time to figure out all those tricks. I need to race. So like, <laughs> I think I might actually just get a proper carburetor for it that's set up. We'll see. But this fiber, this Continental, is a fiberglass bodywork, which does have some weight to it. Actually, that's kind of heavy, now that I think of it. I mean, it's got some heft to it. It's, it's not like heavy, it's pretty light, but for a race car, it's got some heft to it. Like when I first picked up this nose here, and I mentioned you guys, I'm like, dang, that is heavy. So to give an example, just this center section of the Continental is that heavy. Now, the red car, the Tame Prototipo, if you kind of come this way and look there, the lighting's sort of bad. I'm sorry about that, guys. Oh, don't die, cameraman. Don't die. Can you see it? So this is the Tame Prototipo. This is the one we're working on this year with Cameron. It was all red, has carbon fiber bodywork, which is very nice and light. And now you guys can see clearly illustrated the carbon fiber monocoque chassis. So this is a proper carbon fiber tub. And then the engine is a semi-stressed engine in the rear with some steel trunnion bolt-in removable framework with a semi-stressed transaxle. And of course, the suspension mounts directly to the transmission. And camera guy, you probably want to come up here because I'm going to have 47,000 comments right now and go, hey, camera guy. Ugh. Oh, God. Yes, so semi-stressed and here it is. And it's also got an under tray for aerodynamics under the bottom of it because this, this is a pretty cool zooming car. A lot higher performance than the Continental. This car is making 257 horsepower. This thing's probably making 120 or 130. So basically double the horsepower, but this has more downforce and they weigh the same. So even though this is a bigger car, because of the extensive use of carbon and being able to make things like the transaxle on the engine do double duty as the drivetrain, as well as part of the chassis, you can save a lot of weight. Whereas with this car, it's a square steel tube frame that if I'm not mistaken is brazed together. The English were kind of into that back in the day. It might be welded, but it could be brazed. It depends on the vintage. I'm trying to look here. But anyway, if you look here carefully, you can see that that transaxle is partially stressed. So you do have suspension arms mounting to the back of it um, and the front of it. And then some of the suspension, like right here, is mounting to the steel tubular frame that goes to the back of it. So it's sort of in between. Uh, but I want to illustrate the difference of the bodywork. So you saw me kind of picking that up. And this nose, I want to illustrate something. So you guys are going to just have to trust me. I don't have a scale set up. So here, you stand there and turn around. So this is the nose off the formula car. OK, it weighs about that much. I don't know. I'm thinking, what do you think this thing weighs? Does it feel like a gallon of milk? It might be 15 pounds. Okay, it's kind of that's really darn heavy for this. I mean, you could you could punt somebody so far off the track with that. Oh gosh, I don't think this thing weighs much more. Okay, so that versus this. Hold on a sec. I think this is less. Okay, not even joking, guys. I know I look like an idiot here, and maybe you can't see this because of the light, but. And this is what the point everybody needs to understand between fiberglass and carbon fiber. It is not that the carbon fiber is lighter. It's not. Carbon fiber, based upon volume, weighs basically the same thing as fiberglass. The difference is how you lay it up and the fact that the carbon fibers themselves have a much higher strength than the, the glass fibers can be. You can use less of it. So this nose on the old formula car here, gosh, what the heck is in this thing? Uranium? Anyway, um, this nose is heavy, it's thick, it weighs a lot, and that's probably because it's old, and that's probably because they did use to pump people off the track. And I have a feeling the spare nose is a lot lighter. I'm gonna check that one out. But if you look at this, let's look at the underside. This is carbon, and it was done very well and thin. This is the Tame prototipo. It was made in Mexico. Freddy Tame is the one designed it. And even though it's this big rear section, it's very, it's thin, it's strong, and it's super lightweight. So that's how, that's, that's where the magic of racing comes from. Because, I mean, look at this. This is the whole, this is the largest piece of bodywork off this 
this uh, prototype car and it weighs similar to that ghastly heavy old nose. And it's because the strength from both fiberglass and carbon fiber comes from the fibers. The, the resin or epoxy based, I don't want to call it glue, but basically the resin in it, the liquid that goes into it, that's not where the strength comes from. That's just the stuff that orients and holds the fabric in the place to create the strength. You want to have the least amount of resin possible per volume to do it. And that's what vacuum bagging does, is it, it basically sucks it out and creates it to all compress and be low void. You gonna stick that on your head? Do it, do it. Is that one lighter than the other one? Do you look cool? Oh, this is lighter. This is way lighter? lighter. Oh wow, that is substantially lighter. I'll just have them, we'll just paint both of them. Do we look good? Yes, yes. Okay, where are you at? Yeah, right there. Yeah. Yeah. What? Okay, that's dumb. Which one should we use? Both of them. Okay. Yeah, that one's there wasn't any other body work, was there? No, just that one. Okay, this is, the, this is the spare one. That was the one that was on the car, right? Okay, cool. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys that while we had the time to illustrate the nature between fiberglass and carbon fiber. Obviously, this is weighed up, laid up wet, where you basically just paint in, they put the glass fiber on, they didn't really care that much about weight. There's gonna be minimum weight requirements for these, these classes, so you can have a bunch of weight in the nose and it doesn't matter, and if you're bumping into people, you want it to be stronger and heavier, I guess. So there's, in some circumstances, there's no reason to build something out of carbon fiber to make it lighter weight, because you just don't need it. And the fact that it matters, the upper body work here, while that does put a little bit more weight at a higher center of gravity, it really might not matter, because you're not, you don't have to, you don't have any problem meeting your minimum weight requirement, depending on the driver and such. So it does come into a cost, uh, factor um, and fiberglass can do really wonderful structures as well whether it's something that needs to be structural or not um, and just remember that the difference between carbon fiber and fiberglass has is so little it's it's just the fibers primarily and then how you lay it up you could have a really beautiful weave of fiberglass such as the carbon that you can see illustrated here and you could you know you could vacuum bag it and do lay up like that and you could make fiberglass be as nice as this carbon monocoque. We could make a fiberglass monocoque. And then conversely that, I can take carbon fiber, which I've got a whole, here camera guy, let's go find it. I got a whole roll of carbon fiber over here, and you can take the, fi the carbon fiber, the actual carbon fiber, <laughs> um, and you can lay it up wet, just like you would typical fiberglass stuff. So I can literally, basically paint and on both sides of this with let's say like an epoxy resin resin or vinyl ester even though i use epoxy and you can do this wet it um it just has to do with cost and structure and needs and strength and whatever you have um and making it so just thought i'd show you guys that it's going to be fun anyway we're going to take these up for painting tomorrow um you'll just have to come back and see and see what color it's going to be painted but uh, how light weighs this? Ooh, that doesn't weigh squat. The roof, side panels, side pods. Yeah, on the prototypo here. Real cool stuff. But I hope you guys enjoyed just kind of seeing the cars naked, getting ready for paint. And uh, I think 2021 is gonna be amazing, better than this year. So see you guys next time.